Hello and welcome to The Side Shed. My name is Matt Jones. And before we dive into this episode, I just want to make a quick mention of a program that we've got coming up in August. If you're like me, you love to ski and you love to surf. However, it's hard sometimes trying to justify the time to get away and actually, you know, go on holiday and spend a bit of time with yourself. For me, I'm always wanting to, if, if I'm not investing into the business, then it's something that doesn't really get a priority. So with that in mind, we've developed a program which enables you to do both. Coming up in August in New Zealand, in Wanaka, we're holding our very first Learn and Ski. And at Learn and Ski, you're gonna be able to come along, we're gonna ski in the mornings, we're gonna do a workshop in the afternoon, and then at night, we're probably going to party. It's gonna be a lot of fun. There's gonna be a lot of like-minded businesses coming along there, basically people that enjoy the snow and enjoy investing in themselves and their businesses. A bit of time out, you're gonna learn some cool stuff, and of course, we're gonna to get to play on some of the best mountains in the Southern Hemisphere. So uh, hopefully you guys can make it if you wanna come along. You can head across to the siteshed.com forward slash events and that will take you to the page where you can um, get some more information on that. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So hopefully we'll see you there. Hello and welcome back to Toolbox Talks. My name is Matt Jones and you are joining us in the Business Uncomplicated series with my co-host, Ellen Raw. This is episode three. This is the final episode. I am, it's called D-Day, which stands for Decision Day. And uh, if you missed the first two episodes, episode 47 was called Get a Grip on Your Financials. And I strongly suggest you go back and check that out. Uh, following that one that was episode 48, which is Business Planning Made Easy. And then that perfectly segues into today's episode. So, so I hope you enjoy. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello and welcome back to Toolbox Talks. It is episode three of the series that I'm doing with Ellen Raw on Business Uncomplicated. In the first episode, we spoke about getting a grip on your financials in the second episode, we spoke about business planning made easy. And in t- t- today's episode, we are talking about, what are we talking about, Ellen? D-Day. D-Day. Decide Was that dramatic? Day. <laughs> <laughs> D-Day. I'll use my radio voice. It's D-Day. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So D-Day stands for Decide Day. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about quit your business. You know, a lot of people, People say, well, you, you know, you never quit. In the U.S., that's kind of a, a valued, va- that's a valued value that we never quit, right? That we're going to just uh, drive through and make things happen. And that's, you know, all that and fantastic. But at some point, you get to decide if this business is serving your life. And we've got tips and conversations for how you do that. Okay. Well, this is interesting. Okay. So I suppose we may as well dive into... Um, the why? Why? Why would I want to quit my business? I've just been working on this for the last five years. It's it's getting there. Why? Why would I even consider quitting? Well, let's let's look at what we've covered so far in this series on making business uncomplicated. You know, let's start with the scorecard and get a grip on the financials. So let's say that you've got that pretty well handled. Every week you're looking at the score, sales and expenses, whether or not you're profitable, if you have any cash, if you're narrowing in on your goals and your budget, your financial plan. And then we talked about business planning made easy. So as you get some money and some options, you can broaden your your vision and your scope and say, well, what do I really want to do? Do I want to create a a new division, a new location? Do I want to grow my company? Do I want to start up another one? You You get to pick and decide and choose these things and you put a little plan together. And all of that's fine, except for at some point you may wake up and think, why am I doing this? The juice ain't worth the squeeze. I'm not happier. I, uh, I might be missing something. You know, you've got some kind of ennui or boredom or perhaps there's a, a frustration. Or maybe have you ever gotten to a point in your life where you're just tired of something? You don't feel like there's much left to learn about it. And it may be time to do something new. Maybe it's a family business. Ooh, it's a family business. And what you want is not what other people in the business want. So you find yourself perhaps compromising. So there can be many reasons that that when you find yourself during the process of growing your business, if it isn't working for you, then it's it's an it's time to talk about D Day. And and here's what can happen if you don't put a D Day on your calendar. So let, let me define what that is. Now let's say 
you're not sure if this business is, is working for you. And you don't know if you want to even do it any longer. Don't quit on a bad day. That's rule number one. If you're having a terrible day, do not march into the office and announce to every other family member, I'm out of here. I encourage you not to do that. <laughs> Instead, put a date on the calendar and let's say it's going to be 12 15 2016. Or, you know, just pick a day towards the end of the year, or maybe six weeks from now or six months from now. You just pick a day and you say, on that day, I'm going to make a decision about this business, about whether I'm in or whether I'm out. And between now and D-Day, you're going to work your plan. But here's what happens if you don't put D-Day on your calendar. See if you can relate to this. That every day you're waffling. You're thinking, am I in? Am I out? I hate this. Is that a sign? Should I leave? Is, is this you know God telling me that it's time to wrap it up? Or you know what? We just made a great sale. That feels pretty good. Maybe I'm back in. But that one foot in, one foot out is exhausting. And it gets even worse when you vocalize it. You walk into the office and you say, oh, you know what? It's not working for me anymore. And your wife is like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Are you in? Are you out? I don't know, man. I don't think I can do this. And now she's upset. And then the next day you feel good and she walks in. You know what? You're right. I, I can't see us doing this. Or why don't we just shut this thing down? It's exhausting. Yeah. And your team hates it too. I, are you relating to this in any way? Yeah, I am. Not so much with my current position, but I certainly with positions I've had in the <laughs> in the past. Or people you've talked to. Oh, good grief. Yeah. Right. That they're, you know, you go out to lunch and you're just, again, you're still on the phone. You make a decision. Yeah, you're still so whinging. Yeah. So, yeah, still whinging. I love that word. Okay. So if you make that, if you make that D-Day appointment, now what we do is we shut down the whining. Now, once you've decided on D-Day and it, keep in mind that all owners are in on D-Day. So if you've got a family business and there's multiple owners or you and your wife have the business, even if you're the president, but she's still an owner. Involve her in this conversation. I'm not sure that this is what I want to do. Oh, okay. Are you quitting today? No. I think we should put a date on the calendar and then we should decide. And then you agree upon that date on the calendar. And then you trot out your business plan and you explore that top projects list and you update it and you update your calendar. You liven it up. You refresh it because here's what can happen. If you were to quit, you might wonder, did I give it my all? I kind of quit on a bad day. It really wasn't that bad. And this is where this is where I learned this. I had a boyfriend once upon a time who was a mountain climber and he climbed all the 8,000 meter peaks across the world. And he climbed Aconcagua. Do you remember where that is? Is that in Chile or something or Argentina? It's somewhere in South America. Okay, he was climbing Aconcagua. And he came back and he was telling me about it. And uh, his climbing partner got within 100 feet of the top, 100 vertical feet of the top, and then had to turn around. He couldn't make it. And I said, wow. You know, now 100 vertical feet at that altitude is no small thing, right? I mean, that, that's miles in terms of the reality of that. Yeah. But it's still, in, in some ways, still pretty close to have gone that far and then turn around and not to, to summit, it, to summit the, the peak. And so I said... He must have been hurting pretty bad. And my friend said, he better have, because as soon as you turn around, the pain goes away. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that's really heavy, isn't it? So when you do decide, you better have left it all on the playing field because you, you don't want to wonder if you could have pulled it off. And if you quit on a bad day or if you've used so much psychic energy one foot in, one foot out, over and over, and you finally just quit. And then, you know, a month or two goes by, and then you think, well, wait, how close was I? Could I have pulled that off? You know, you see this all the time. And so your business does not have to exist. So let's talk about that for a little bit, too. So suppose you decide that, you know, you work your plan, you get to D Day, and you go, you know what? I've given it my all. I worked my plan. I don't want to do this anymore. Then you can quit. Because here's the thing about a business. A business is like a car. A business is supposed to move you in the direction of what you want out of life. When we talked about the business planning process in the last session, one of the suggestions I made is to write an essay about your perfect life. And your business is a subset of the perfect life. It's not all about the business. Unfortunately, so many people sacrifice their life for their business. My husband's partner 
died at age 33, stressed himself out, actually punched out, man. And is that what you want? No, you want to have, you know, a family life, social life, adventures, you know, you get to pick, but the business is supposed to get you there. It's supposed to provide some adventure and money and, you know, access to some of the things that you want. But like a car, you could sell the car, you can abandon the car, you could fix the car, you could get a second car, but none of this business is you. So often we're so tied up in this business as our identity that we think if we decided to shut the business down, that that somehow makes us worth less of a human being as a human being. Mm. What are your thoughts? I've been talking for a while. You, yeah, you no, it's, I was sort of, I suppose, you, you know, what you were saying about, um, you know, the, the, the business should be, you know, one of the key indicators for, your, you know, how you live your life. You see all this stuff, you know, in the media and social media and whatever, People like, you know, Gary V, they're all about the hustle, man. You know, like they work, you know, 20 hours a day and, you know, they do it seven days a week. And, you know, they, as opposed, as, as a result, you know, they may not be in the great, greatest state of health and all this kind of stuff. It makes you, I don't know, I've never really been able to resonate with that sort of mindset. To me, it's always been a matter of, well, you know, surely you can, you shouldn't have to compromise things like your health or your family or your, you know, your personal life for, for the sake of your business. It's just a, you've just got to find a way to make it, make it work. And perhaps that's what you, perhaps that's where you might need to make that decision. You know, if it's, if it's not working, then, you know, where do you draw the line? Is it, is it time to throw it in? And to ask, to be willing to ask that question, because Gary V's ideal scene, his perfect life, his intention, you know, that spot on the horizon that he's marching towards doesn't have to be yours. You know, right. Even if there are many, many things that a guy like that inspires in you, your mentors aren't perfect and they're not you. So you always want to take this through your filter and decide, what do I want? And that's the answer that matters. Yep. You no, know, not what anybody else thinks about your choice, but what you, you know, if you're living your life on your terms, God, isn't that a big win? And yeah. so, I, you know, and I also look at people like Sir Richard Branson, who totally inspires me, always has had his family as part of this business. It's been a very lifestyle thing they, that they do work wherever they are. They play whenever they're working. I love his approach. Now, it's not for everybody, but that inspires me. And he doesn't look like he's working that hard. So one of the philosophies that I've developed is I don't think the most successful people are working very hard. In their books, they'll tell you how hard they worked. I think there's some badge that you get to wear if you work really hard. <laughs> yeah, but now they're not. And I'm seeing a corollary between being that successful and working less hard. Because at that point, you are getting other people in on the game. You are demonstrating leadership and delegation and getting projects done. You are, you know, making mistakes without you know, putting on a hair shirt and being devastated. You know, that's what I see at the people who've reached that pinnacle. And I'm wondering, well, what if we acted as if we had that level of success right now and embraced it? Wouldn't that create the conditions to get us there anyway? You know, maybe we have it backwards. This idea that we're going to work really hard for some end, uh, you know, end point where the success and happiness just is delivered unto us. I don't buy that for a minute. I don't think there's... there's, I mean, I suppose at the end of the day regardless you're going to have to work hard at i mean it doesn't it might not be all day every day for you know for the rest of your life but there's going to be times i think when you're going to need to sit back and you're going to need to you know have like a condensed period of time where you really do sit down and knuckle under to get something done and across the line but is but let's let's challenge the definition of the word hard jim Rohn says that the word easy means something you can do so right. if you can do it it's easy so hard is so much of a value, a, an emotional charge than the reality of it. Like somebody like Gary V looks like he's living life on his terms. Now, some would say, God, he works really hard. He's, you know, from you know, seven in the morning till 11 p.m. And all. But he, to me, looks like he's living the dream. That's what he wants to do. So is it hard? And that, to me, like that word is one I question anymore. The, why, why even say it? Yeah, it I'm just going to be. I'm going to be. I'm going to be. You know, full out today. I've got some exciting stuff to do. It's a, a busy day with a lot of cool projects and fun conversations and that kind of thing. But that hard thing puts us in an arena of like there is no badge. And I will tell you, if you are at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in sales, would you have to work twice as hard, whatever that means, to get to five hundred thousand? 
And if you wanted to get to a million, would you have to work four times as hard? Of course not. You can't, you can't get there from there. You can't get there with that approach. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think that that's where people say, oh, you don't understand how hard this is, how much. Well, then what are you going to cut out? What, could, what ball could you just let drop? You know what I do every now and then? I will delete all emails that are more than two days old because you already blew it. <laughs> you already blew it. You can go back through. You can say sorry that you didn't answer them. You already missed it. That you know, you take the hit and you move on. But like, I'm a I'm a big <laughs> fan of like just get back on track and let's go forward. Don't keep beating yourself up. Make an apology the next time you see that guy. You know what? I blew it. I didn't answer you. Yeah, I would like to do that, but could we put it out a couple of months? Or they they really they'll be fine. They'll get over it. They'll get over it. Somebody said to me once. Well, what if you know opportunity knocks and you don't answer and you're not ready? And they said, Oh, this is Abraham. I don't know if you ever listened to Esther Hicks. And she said that, Well, opportunity is like ships at the harbor. If you go to the harbor and you miss your ship, there's another ship. There's tons of ships. Ships are coming in all the time. And that's what opportunity is like. I am just old enough now that I am not going to take it so hard. So when you put <laughs> day on the calendar and you, you, you say this business could stay or go, that perhaps is just the light touch on the rain you might need to get over how hard you're working and how much energy you're, you're putting into those obstacles. Just put down the baggage. And what about though the scenario where um, you know, you've been working in your own business for, for a number of years. It's not really working, but if you're to throw it in, what are you going to do? Well, and that's where you could, could start another binder or you could start another business plan. Well, before I quit this one, what if one of my projects is, right? We've got our master projects list mm-hmm. and then we've got a top three or five. So what if one of those projects was to explore business number two? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to spend two hours a week thinking on it. Now, thinking is an, is a, is an interesting thing. Thinking is a leader's most important work. Mm. You get to imagine one of, one of my good friends who's created an $80 million empire on his way to a billion dollars in sales. He's got a billion dollar business plan and I would never bet against this guy. He's amazing. But he says to me, every time I see him and every time he talks to his team, he opens it with, I live in a world that doesn't exist. I am imagining our future. That's my job. And let me tell you what I've come up with. He opens every speech to his team with this. Is that just adorable. Yeah. So he thinks about it. But the problem with thinking is, Matt, that it doesn't look like you're doing anything. (laughs) And in the Western culture, action is so valued. You look at someone who's just standing there and you go, well, what's he doing? He's not doing anything. Oh, should we fire him? Maybe he's thinking. And you'll see this with like really good troubleshooters. They may even have a cigarette and they'll look at the boiler. And the boiler almost seems to respond to the attention. And then they come up with a game plan as opposed to just turning wrenches and adjusting things just to pause a minute and think about it. What's the problem here? What might my approach be? And if you, if you take that perspective with your business and if you build some of that time into your week, into your day, then you could say, I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I'm going to think on it. I might meditate on it, which is where I just shut up long enough to be inspired. And those are reasonable activities and things that you could do to consider that transition. And what you might find is, I, I'm talking to a guy right now who is going to sell his company. He's been ready to sell his company. He found a buyer. The last year they've negotiated everything. The buyer's getting cold feet. And the guy said to me, you know what? I think I want it back anyway. It's been not, I can do this. What am I getting rid of it for? What would I do instead? So it was just that process that allowed him to really embrace what he has. I love this business. What am I doing? But if you, you know, when you're, when you're willing to let go of it, then you start to gain some perspective. It's just a car. You could fix the car. You could take the car back or you could go do something entirely differently. You know, consulting is something that happened. This happened to me in my life about a year and a half ago. I had this just, just God landed on me moment that I don't want to do consulting anymore. Now for me, consulting is like 80% was 80% of my income. And it's pretty crack cocaine easy. Like if I want more sales, I make a couple of calls and I get more sales. You know, I can get a fix really fast. So I'm thinking, but I love helping people and I've been good at this. And, I, and it just, I didn't know why I didn't want to do it anymore. I just didn't. And then I came up with like some thoughts about it. I, I just feel like I've kind of played it out. And then I thought, well, you know what? I can only reach so many people. If, I, if you consult and you go on site, how many companies can you visit in a year? 
Right. A dozen, 20, that's a lot. And so, you know, what if it was just okay for me to say no to that, even not knowing what was going to fill the void? And it was, it has been scary. You know, so well, what if I cranked up my, my um, seminar sales? And what if I got more involved in my online marketing efforts and figured out some ways to do that? Both of which I have engaged and both of which have taken longer than I thought they might. But if you don't give yourself that space, then where can the new thing come in? And when in timing, there just may be like a three month period where I've got this kind of scary gap. Yeah. But in the big picture, like it's all going to be fine. I'm so glad you just um you just said that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it takes a lot longer than you than you've expected because I I thought I was the only person on the planet that does that. I set these goals, and then I sometimes look and I'm like, oh my god, I'm still doing this. What is going on? Alivi Alivi says this to me all the time. It may cost longer. It may cost more and take longer than you think it's going to. Are you okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> he, he's just a, he's just a, such a solid guy yeah. that he understands that it may take three to five years. At some point though, he will D-Day it. He'll say, okay, I'm going to give this project three years. Yeah, right. But he doesn't give it three months. He yeah. says, act as if you're going to be in business for a while. And what kind of decisions would you make? It's, he's such a good business philosopher. And then that parlays into such appropriate action. Yeah, he told me actually when I when I <laughs> interviewed him the other day, he he gave his when he was working with his um with his family in New York, mm-hmm. he said he'd given them um I think he said he he went in their office one day and he said okay I'm giving you guys my notice in three years I'm leaving. <laughs> he gave him three years notice, and not <laughs> only and, and that that colored everything because then what he did is that I'll make sure that you don't miss me. We'll put the systems and procedures in place. Right, and he did, and he said the whole time till the day he walked out, they didn't believe him. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, wait, where are you going? I told you three years ago. This yeah. is happening. You know, but that's where then when he saw the impact it had on the family and on him, and he thought, I got to help other guys do this. Al comes from a place of deep love. He does not need the money. He comes from a place of like, I almost killed myself. His, his mantra is less stress and more success. And he absolutely lives that every day. He's very inspiring yeah. to me. But I, I, I really like this topic of D-Day. So suppose then you come together on D-Day and you decide that you're going to go. You now in a family business, like with Al's, you might then say, okay, I'm going to go. And the rest of them say, well, I'm going to stay. Then you craft a new plan. You update the top projects list and you commit to what you're going to need to do to make a smooth transition out of the company. Right. And if you decide you're going to stay, then you put another D-Day on the calendar, say, six months from now. This is not uh, this is not a one-off. If you're going to continue in business, give yourself these milestone moments where you reflect. Do I want to stay? Is this business still serving me? What a powerful, positive exercise. Yeah. And I suppose as well, you know, is it serving my customers is serving my industry. Well, Blockbuster should have done a little more of this, right? <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have Blockbuster? We did. Yeah, yeah, we did too. And, you know, they were everywhere and there's not a sign of them. And they just, they could have had the Netflix market. You know, this is yeah. what happened with, uh, with uh, you know, the horse and buggy industry and mm-hmm. everything else. You know, as the world moves on, what business are you in? Nokia. That's a good question. That's something that Dan Hollihan says. If the if the um, people who were in the horse and buggy industry had asked the question, what industry I am in, they wouldn't have come up with horse and buggy. They would have come up with transportation and maybe had latched on to the railroads or um, automobiles or something once upon a time. And that, you know, that just happens over and over. But this reflective moment, there's one more story. I could tell one more story if we have time. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, this has this has everything to do with D-Day. Once upon a time. Andy Grove, who was the CEO of Intel, was talking to his COO and or CFO. And he says, you know what? Our, our company is in trouble. And we're going to be heading into the shareholders meeting. What do you think is going to happen? And the CFO says to him, I think we're going to get fired. He said, I do too. Because what had happened is they were in memory. That was their main product. And they were kicking butt in memory until some companies in Japan started making better, faster stronger, bigger, better memory chips for cheaper. So yeah. they're just getting their clocks cleaned. And so Andy Grove says, well, if we're going to get fired, 
why don't we pretend we already have? And I guess they actually walked out of the building, walked across the street, looked at the building, and then walked back in as the new kids, kind of assumed the mantle of the new kids. So what would what should we do? I think we should get out of memory chips. Now, this is this is weird because it's their primary product. And they make the decision to transition the company into processing. And then they, you know, dun, 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 and Intel gets reborn. But that perspective, that understanding, so D-Day may be a moment where you say, I'll stay in the business. Like, this is what I decided with my business. My business is going to continue, but I'm not going to do one-to-one consulting anymore. I'm going to wrap up the, the clients I have. I'm going to work only with I'm not taking new clients, you know, there, there've been some, it's taken me a little longer and cost me a little more, you know, to, to do this. But if I create that space, then now I have the time and the energy and the interest in developing new products and new, you know, like tonight, this is a, a perfect, uh, this is perfectly aligned with my plan is to get more exposure, get more people who may be interested in in being on my email list or my Facebook page. And at some point we may create some community and they might buy a book. And, you know, this is all aligned then with my plan. So thank you very much. But I wouldn't have the time to do this if I was still doing consulting at the level I was doing it before. Right. So, you know, you get to make decisions as to what you want to do with um, the plumbing. You know, how many plumbers just wouldn't let go of copper? Well, there are better ways to move water. Yeah. You know, so what's it going to be? Are you going to, are you going to uh, decide? So That's what deep is all about. I could talk to you forever. We've been, we, these were 20 minute segments. What have we been on for three and a half hours now? Not quite, <laughs> but we're getting there. <laughs> enjoy but anyway, so I like what you were saying then, because that was, appreciate those. but what you were saying there was pretty powerful because it's not so much about maybe throwing in the towel. It's maybe often a case of evolving and making changes to adapt. So I think that's pretty right. important. Yeah. Right. Day to decide and to reflect and to, without it being a bad day, don't quit on a bad day, plan a moment where you're going to take stock and then make that decision. Yep. I'm back in. And that way you don't whinge about it on a daily basis. You just, you know, work the plan. doesn't even have to be that hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, that's great. I think we pretty much wrapped it up. What do you reckon? I feel like this was a, a great conversation and thank you for the, the, open time and the ability to, to unpack these ideas and expand a little bit on the thoughts. I so appreciate that. Hey, thank you for your expertise. It's been amazing. Yay. As I'm well, sure I, the downloads will prove. Helps. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, isn't it? I mean, business, uh, Allie Brown, I think said this, that business is the best personal development program you'll ever take. <laughs> yeah, well, I know <laughs> through, through choice or necessity or one or the other. Yeah, but you're living the dream. I mean, look how cool your life is. You live in Australia you go into the office, you map, you map out your plan for the day, and then you go surfing. That's awesome. Well, I mean, I suppose that's, I suppose the message that we like to dispel is that it's, it's not always like it takes a lot of work to get to that st- <laughs> to get to that stage. It's not a, uh, I don't want people yeah, to think but that you, you met that is that something. This is the life you want to lead, and there you are. Well, it is, and that's what I want to do. So. You know, so, you know, as, as, as people set goals and, and do plans, like on a D-Day, it's a nice thing to reflect back on what you've managed to create. Like if you're waking up with who you want to wake up with, if you get to go surfing most days, what else can you create? That should give you confidence. I was listening to a podcast yesterday. It was talking about how important it is to celebrate, to celebrate the small wins and how as humans, we typically don't do it. And um, it was actually... It was a Tim Ferriss podcast. I don't know if you listened to that one at all, but he was basically saying the one with the thirty days of genius, the, the Chase Jarvis thing. Um, it was. Oh, uh, yeah, it was that one actually. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Now, I thought he was. I, I'm going to say something after you do, but I thought his interview was very intense and really interesting. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. I, I liked what he was saying about you know he had the jar and um basically his wins jar and every time you had a win he'd write it on a small bit of paper stick it in the jar and then whenever you're feeling down or whenever you have something you know that doesn't go right in your business you go back to the jar stick your hand in pull something out and you go oh that's right i did do that and you say that makes you reflect on all the cool things that you have done because for one reason or another you can have a million things going on in your business and they're all fantastic you have one bad thing happen and what do you think about <laughs> yeah or one bad review and you've had 65 five-star reviews right you know so if we and um on that same podcast series, Lewis Howell was saying that he gets into gratitude when he starts to to get into fear or anything else. He knows that if he starts, you know, checking off the things he's grateful for, it's just a hundred percent going to work 
to move them in a better into a better emotional space. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that's a discipline. These little things that we do, you know, putting a plan together, running the numbers, having a routine in the morning, these disciplines allow us to expand the 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 creative aspects of business and to do the things that we really want to do. There's this paradox, you know, this idea that, well, if I were to apply that kind of discipline, then I'm limiting myself and my freedom. But that's what buys you the time. Yeah. You no, know, you don't waste time trying to figure out what your next move is. You get a little more disciplined about the routine, about the calendar and the business plan and the financials. And then you get to get creative. What do I want to do? What projects do I want to pick? <gasps> How delicious. Yeah. Well, Yay. look, Ellen, right, I think that's a wrap for this episode. Up. And I think that's actually a wrap for this series. For the series, I got a little freebie, ellenroar.com forward slash shed. Mm-hmm. I've got a couple of great financial tools for you and an introduction, an introduction to some of the other products that I've, that I've made available. So uh, that puts you on my email list too, so we can be BFFs. Absolutely. So, and I'll be posting a link to that in the show notes for Chisel. For Chisel. Yeah. For Chisel. Like Snoop Dogg. Exactly. <laughs> you gangsta. Yeah, totally. <laughs> anyway, um, I just want to say thank you uh, for co-hosting me on this series. It's been amazing, and I have written that many notes. It's not even funny. Um, so I'm, I've certainly got some work to do, and I hope all you listeners out there certainly have as well. Um, if you missed the last two episodes, make sure you skip back and get them. They are available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and, of course, through the sitechat.com forward slash podcasts. Ellen, thank you. I appreciate the time you've put into this series. It's been fantastic. Oh, me too for you. And we will no doubt collaborate again in the future. I'm having way too much fun not to. Yay, me too. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a wrap for this episode. That's a wrap for this series. And um, stay tuned for following episodes on the Site Shed. So if you haven't already, head across to the SiteShed.com and register for our Toolbox Talks where you'll be regularly sent great episodes just like this straight to your inbox so you'll never miss one. Uh, if you want to join the community, you can head across to the sitesheddcom forward slash members, where for a small monthly fee, you'll get access to regularly updated training material, as well as access to our forum where you can mingle and collaborate with trade-based business owners just like you from all over the world. If you're enjoying this podcast, please head across to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. We greatly appreciate it, and it helps us spread the word and reach the masses. Likewise, if you know anyone that might benefit from the content we create, then please go ahead and share this with them. You've been listening to Toolbox Talks by The Site Shed. For more great content just like this, head across to thesiteshed.com and join the amazing community of savvy trade-based business owners.